Star Wars absolutely has more than its fair share of cool characters that really appeal to fans of all ages. And it has other things that I just can't get out of my head. Well, for those of us who had the Star Wars action figures in the 80s, we tended to like the characters the most that we had as action figures. I'm actually going to be doing a whole video on this soon, but it's a really interesting phenomena. So as an example, I never had Hammerhead. And when Momo Nadone, or Hammerhead, came out in Power of the Force 2, it was cool, but I wasn't nearly as excited as when Greedo came out in the same wave, because I had Greedo as a kid. And having the action figure tended to make that character much more appealing to me. So I'm excited today because we get to talk about one of my favorite vintage toys updated, the Ugnaughts. I don't know what it is. They're just these short little pig guys, and they honestly, with their haircut, especially for the figure, totally reminded me of a space Oompa Loompa. What can I say? I'm sorry. It's like once you see that it's just a space Oompa Loompa with a pig snout, you'll, yeah, you just you can't unsee it. Well, there were a few variants to represent different Ugnaughts, I guess you could say, in the vintage line. Well, it was more a purple-blue switcheroo of the apron. And the figure that was done in the vintage line, the original line, was essentially the guy on the left there. I'm, I'm sure he has a real name that's been in the Decipher games, and I'm sure I could look it up on Wikipedia, but I'm not. Ugnaughts have been popular, though. I mean, they show up in almost all Star Wars entertainment. And whether they're, you know, a wise sidekick or just there for comic relief... Finding ways to make the entire Star Wars saga about Ugnaughts is, uh, well, something that many people on the internet apparently have done. Alright, well, most people who are not the super fans of Star Wars just know the Ugnaughts as these guys who walked around Cloud City and kind of did maintenance, and they were seen in a few different scenes, repairing things, freezing people in carbonite, breaking apart droids, you know, that kind of thing. Now, Cloud City is not the only place that we would get an Ugnaught, Ugnaught, Ugnaught in uh, the original trilogy. There's a member of Jabba's Palace, alien menagerie, however you want to put it, the alien creatures. And uh, there's a couple characters that uh, from the cantina, or the same species, and there's also an Ugnaught that uh, hangs out in Jabba's Palace. In fact, people have done fan customs of this figure, which I know I'm sure has a real name too, but again, I'm not going to look that up. You can do that yourself, because that's the fun of the internet. All right, so, lots of Ugnaughts, lots of Ugnaughts in Cloud City, lots of Ugnaughts throughout Star Wars, yet we seem to always get the same dude over and over again. In fact, every Ugnaught that's been done in the modern line is in one way or another an update of the specific Ugnaught from the Vintage line. Uh, but what's cool about Power of the Force 2 is we get a second guy. We get kind of like a worker and then a more bureaucrat guy. But I'm sorry, they both still look like Oompa Loompas. I mean, come on, they practically even have orange faces and, you know, green and red hair. Well, gray hair. Either way, it was great to get a different Ugnaught and an update of the toy I had as a kid. Because, like I said, getting updates of the exact toy and then getting a figure or a new toy of a figure I had, it's very cool. So the other one is kind of based on the guy who's standing next to him. I have to imagine uh, this specific film still wound up on, you know, someone at Kenner Hasbro's desk. What's interesting is when the Ugnaughts would be uh, revised, updated later on in the Legacy collection, They'd still release two Ugnaughts, but the head that came with them was sort of the uh, the other head. So the worker had the head of the bureaucrat, and the, the bureaucrat had the head of the worker, but they're easily swappable, which is kind of cool. So it's definitely like getting two different figures. But interesting how for, for the later release, they, they released them with sort of swapped heads, maybe to make it different from the original release? I don't know. Either way, it's the same two guys we got in Power of the Force too. so... They live on as the Ugnaughts. All right, traveling from Cloud City to Jabba's Palace on Tatooine. Well, as mentioned, and there's our Ugnaught buddy again. Jabba's Palace has some of the uh, widest variety of aliens and creatures that make great toys. And there's a few left we haven't gotten. But besides from the alien creatures, there's also quite a few really interesting droids from Jabba's Palace. And... Looking at them as a totality, it's 
a really cool addition to our droid shelf, which, you know, the characters have become so popular from the Jabba's Palace uh, scenes that a lot of them have gotten new jobs in the uh, Mandalorian and beyond. Droids were something really special about the vintage line because, you know, they were robots. They weren't humans. They weren't aliens. They were, they were things. They were, but they were characters. They captured our imagination. And this is my droid shelf in my office. I love Star Wars droids. I love their shapes. I love their variety. I love how beat up they look and make the world look lived in, which was, you know, so much of the fantasy was that this was like a real world, not a super shiny world. Now, 8D8 was also, like the Ugnaught, a figure I had as a kid. And automatically, if you were a figure I had as a kid, that kind of uh, ups you as far as Star Wars popularity in my book. So, yeah, it's very weird how that seems to happen with uh, lots of brands. And much like uh, <laughs> EV-99, 8D8 here also gets a new job in The Mandalorian because, you know, Jabba Palace droids are just that darn popular. I mean, heck, they they were menacing. I mean, this guy's job was to torture other droids. We'll get into that in a moment. But it's interesting to note that besides the fact that this figure came with the largest accessory to date, there would be larger ones, but this was pretty impressive for uh, Power of the Force 2 era. He comes with the entire torture mechanism. But... To me, what's more interesting is this is one of the few figures in the modern line where I feel like the vintage figure was better. I get that there's some more deco on the new one, but that pre-posed hand in the uh, pulling the lever position and, you know, having to make room for the light pipe eye, it just didn't work for me as well as the vintage figure. Now, since we're talking about AT8, we have to talk a little bit about his job seen here. So... He's a torture droid, right? I mean, he wants to torture people even in The Mandalorian. He's trying to talk uh, Boba Fett, right, in the book of Boba Fett, talking uh, Boba Fett into torturing people. So what's with droids and torture? Are, are, they, are they created to torture other droids? Are they just fulfilling the wishes of their human master? It's a very interesting thing, and I, I think we're getting down a huge rabbit hole. It probably takes its own video, but yeah, Droids that want and can droids feel pain when they're tortured? Like, uh, boy, this, this these characters really do boggle the mind if when you get down to it. And you know, I, I know people are starting to say, you know, you know, free the droids and droid revolution in Star Wars. But heck, that's what all leads to Star Wars fan theories, and there are a lot of fan theories about the droids, <laughs> just like all of the ones that Jar Jar was going to wind up being the secret Dark Lord of the Sith. I mean, heck, my friends and I would come up with uh, our own theories, or usually they were kind of our own names, like the fact that we called this the Legomi, because that's what Luke says. He says, it just Legomi and disappeared. My friend Evan thought that's what its name was, Legomi, so we always called it that. Much like we always uh, said Bosk's real name was Rex New Drouth, and he was just an actor recreating the uh, Bosk moment in a Star Wars movie. Now, the biggest of all the, the uh, theories, though, that we came up with as kids was the reverse time travel theory. And the reason that it's appropriate to bring it up here is because it involves Gonk. It's the reverse time travel theory of Gonk. So when we first meet Gonk, he has a very low voice in the Sandcrawler. When we see him being tortured in Jabba's palace, he screams out in a very high voice. Again, droids feel pain. So he goes from a lower voice to a higher voice, the opposite of what was happening to us as 13, 14-year-old boys. So we decided this meant everything must be backwards. It's time travel. What we're seeing in Star Wars is actually all happening in reverse. And at the end of everything, the Empire wins. The reverse time travel theory of gunk, we called it. What can I say? You know, we were Star Wars nerds at 13 and 14. This is what you do, you know, when you're... Uh... Okay, we still do this as adults. What can you say? All right, well, the figure is really good. It is, but I really hope he gets another update for the uh, current vintage line. Mostly because, not just I was disappointed by this figure, but he is another winner in a different way when it comes to Star Wars. 8D8 is probably the figure that has the longest on-shelf life. 
He was on jail for years. I know people who are finding him 10 years afterwards. It's why he still sells for his retail price on eBay. He just was not heavily bought. He would stick around at uh, Rite Aids and, and Walgreens for years. Well, if you want to torture droids, <laughs> at least you have a way to do it cheaply.